Welcome to another episode of AARP's Periodic Story on the Mental Well-Being of Older Adults. This recorded interview, along with previous interviews, will be available at facebook.com slash AARP Maryland and at youtube.com slash AARP Maryland. I am Lois Mazaris. I am a volunteer with AARP, and I was recently appointed to their executive council. I am a licensed psychologist, and prior to retirement, I was the chief operating officer and the clinical director for Chimes Delaware. I am a previous director of the Developmental Disabilities Administration, and I also was the director of the um, program and psychological services at the health department, where I worked with local health departments. I currently have a private practice in Severna Park, and I can tell you there is an extreme shortage of mental health workers being a mental health worker myself. And that's why today's discussion is really essential, because it does to help fill in some gaps that we are seeing during this mental health crisis. Uh, we will be focusing on the National Network of Local Crisis Centers, and they are essential because they provide a free and confidential support for people who are in suicide crisis or emotional distress, and they are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And here to discuss this are Daniel Rabbit and Samara Adul Fata of the Behavioral Health System of Baltimore. And I'd like to give a quick introduction before we get started with our interview. Dan is the policy director for the Greater Baltimore Regional Integrated Crisis System Partnership, better known to me as GBRIC. Mm -hmm. uh, he works closely with the Maryland General Assembly and other state leaders to advance policies that will build an effective and sustainable behavioral health crisis system. He has spent his career expanding mental health services previously for anti-poverty organizations, and as such brings a passion for justice and a belief that we can achieve social change so that our communities are able to thrive. Samara is the Community Engagement Coordinator for the Greater Baltimore Regional Integrated Crisis System Partnership, and she works on building relationships with key stakeholders and building awareness about the behavioral health crisis services. We are so happy that you agreed to join us today because this is a real crisis in our in our uh, nation as well as in our state. And I know how much you know about these local crisis centers. So thank you very much. And I'm going to begin with the first question of what is the 988 Suicide Prevention and Crisis Lifeline and why was it established? Sure, I, I can take that one. And thank you so much for having us, Lois. We really appreciate the opportunity to uh, connect with your members and uh, try to raise the awareness that the public has of uh, 988. So the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline uh, builds off of a previous network called the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, um, but it took that network and provided a new three-digit number, which is 988, um, so that um, access to that network would be more easily remembered by, by the public and by, by people who are experiencing distress and who need to use the service. Uh, when you call 988, um, it's, uh, you get sent into a network uh, across the country of over 200 local call centers. So you're not talking to one big network, you're going to end up talking to a local provider. And uh, those call centers uh, have mental health professionals who are specialized in supporting people in uh, crisis and who are having suicidal thoughts who are in urgent need of support. And uh, they provide supportive counseling 
and connection to resources 24 seven free of charge and confidentiality. Uh, can you tell us when the 988 number was released nationally and when was it released in Maryland? Sure, it was, so it's the same time nationally and in Maryland in all the states. Uh, it, the transition occurred July 16th of last year. So, so we're coming up on one year of 988 being, being live. And uh, we've seen a, an increase in, in calls since that occurred, which, which is great, which shows like people in need of support are, are reaching out and getting that support. And I know one of the hopes was that it would decrease people going to emergency rooms. Um, have you seen that happening? Um, that's a little hard to measure, uh, like, in a causal way. You know, there's a lot of different factors at play in whether someone goes to the emergency room or not. Um, in some local areas, like, uh, we're close, you know, we're from Behavioral Health System Baltimore, in the Baltimore area, but we are connected with some other call centers um, around the state and the Montgomery County call center uh, known as Every, Every Mind. Uh, they reported a 13% decrease in uh, Montgomery County 911 calls since 988 went live. So, so that would, you know, you, you could assume that maybe that's meaning fewer people are going to the emergency room. Uh, we've also tracked some data that has shown uh, a decrease in the Baltimore area of repeat visits to the emergency room. Um, but uh, we're looking forward to continuing to get additional data as it comes out, um, as uh, this um, service gets more um, uh, well established. Thank you. Um, how is the service being funded? And I know you just got $12 million from the Maryland legislature. Congratulations. That's wonderful. Uh, tell us how you're going to spend that money and how will you assure funding going into the future? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, well, thank you, Lois. It, it was good to see you at the, the bill signing. We very much appreciate AARP's support on that legislation. Um, so far, the, the federal government has provided some funding for 988, um, and the state of Maryland has provided uh, significantly more funding, the lion's share of, of funding. And um, it uh, both for targeted grants and for what is known as the 988 Trust Fund, which we established to provide reimbursement for different parts of the crisis system. Um, and so that funding is is really important and is allowing uh, 98 call centers to hire new staff, to invest in their um, technological systems, um, to upgrade their infrastructure, and um, to address other gaps in uh, services. Looking ahead, we would love to see um, you know, more investment in, in marketing and uh, uh, system integration and coordination. Um, and some of that funding can be used for things outside of 988 as well, like uh, other urgent care services. Uh, I know like, my colleague Samira helps lead uh, a lot of our promotional and community engagement work, which is one thing that we're funding locally here in Baltimore, but that we'd like to see funded um, more uh, in a more intentional way at the state level too. Thank you. Um, can you tell us how this crisis service is different from others, um, particularly 211, 911? Uh, how do we know when to call 988? Mm -hmm. Samir, do you want to? I know you get that question all the time in the community. <laughs> do you want to? You want to take that one? <laughs> yes. Well, we ask when, when we go out and we speak with the community, as Dan mentioned, we talk about the importance of calling 988 if there is any, if you or your loved one is experiencing an emotional or um, you're in emotional distress or you have a substance use issue. Um, <clears throat> we strongly recommend, like if you're feeling depressed, anxious, um, you know, experiencing trauma, that you call 988. 
if you are experiencing a health emergency or, or a public safety emergency, we recommend that you call 911. So 988 is geared more for emotional support. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's similar to 211. 211 um, has a part of it where if you call 211, you give an option of pressing one, which uh, will connect you to a local helpline. 988 and 211 press one will get you to the same place usually. Um, so they're just two different avenues. But 211 is also broader. So you can call 211 for help paying your, your heating bill. You can call 211 for help applying for food stamps, uh, for information about public libraries. You know, like it's a lot broader than just mental health, whereas 988 is really around uh, supportive counseling for, for emotional distress. Um, what about uh, things like Mental Health America? Is that different? Yeah, Mental Health America. So there's a lot of different phone lines out there. Um, you know, the idea of having a, um, a toll-free free, uh, phone number that you can call for help um, is, is not a brand new idea. Um, and so... Mental Health America, NAMI, the National Alliance for Mental Illness, for all I know, maybe AARP um, has, has different phone numbers that people can call, um, you know, uh, for information, for support. Uh, and, um, and so Mental Health America has a, a phone number like that. NAMI has one. There's, there's uh, ones for different uh, groups. There's a veterans crisis line. Um, I know there's been discussion of making uh, uh, ones for for younger people, for the LGBTQ community, um, and so there's lots of different resources. and And if anyone is like familiar with and comfortable with a particular resource, like by all means, you know, like go to that resource. Um, but the the strength of 988 is that it's it's simple. It's something that everyone can remember, and it's something that can serve everybody. Well, being a senior, it's easy for me to remember. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy you now have 988. Mm -hmm. um, we understand there are eight call centers across Maryland. Can you explain how they operate? Sure. Um, there are eight. Um, they're, they're regional, you know, so there's one that covers Frederick County and the three Western Maryland counties. There are two that work together to cover like the whole Eastern shore. Um, and then there are six to kind of cover the central Maryland and DC uh, metro area um, in different ones. Like uh, there's one that covers Montgomery County. There's one that covers PG County and the three Southern Maryland counties. Um, and then there are three that are working together to cover the the greater Baltimore area, which is like what Samir and I have been working on is this effort to, to integrate uh, the different services in the broader uh, Baltimore area. Um, and the way it works is you call 988, anyone calls 988, and um, based on your phone number, it will direct you to uh, the the most appropriate local call center. So if you have your own, if your phone is in Montgomery County and you call 988, you'll get to the Montgomery County uh, call center. If your if your phone is based in uh, PG County, you'll, you'll go to the PG County uh, call center and so on. Okay. Uh, could you walk us through what happens if someone calls 988? What happens? Can you walk us through the process? Mm -hmm. Do you want to take that one, Samir? Sure. You know, you may hear a little music, um, but you will hear a prompt, um, and it will instruct you if you're a veteran to press one, if you speak um, Spanish to press two, and then if you are a youth and you're uh, a member of the LGBTQ community to press three. 
And shortly thereafter, you will be connected to um, a, a professional who will respond to your call. Um, and our response rate, you know, um, has been very good. Um, you know, we haven't had um, a lot of uh, complaints about it. People have said that they've been connected fairly quickly, which is important. So, and then from there, you can explain to the trained um, professional, you know, exactly what you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. uh, you can text as well, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, text is available. Yeah. Text and then uh, chat also, if you go yeah. to 988lifeline.org, they have a, a chat function if, if you prefer that on your computer. Are you seeing uh, younger people using the text more frequently? That's what, you know, the research and, and mm -hmm. some of our early findings have, have reported, um, which I think is important because that, that's how they communicate. Um, also, which I think is important is the follow-up. You know, um, we have heard that uh, if there are specific issues uh, when a person has initially called that there is a follow-up component. You know, they will check in on that individual as an example if a person called and they are connected with a, um, with a provider, uh, someone from that call center um, within our three, uh, four region jurisdiction will follow up to see, you know, how they're doing, um, did they get the support they needed and um, if they were satisfied. Mm -hmm. So. That's very important. That's mm -hmm. wonderful that the follow-up is occurring. Um, having worked with both of you, I know you've done a couple of things to take care of older adults. Uh, could you go over a couple of things that you've done in that along those lines? Certainly. We have uh, subcommittees, um, uh, a larger subcommittee of all the regions, as well as the local subcommittees. And on the subcommittees, uh, we have representatives from the older adult communities. Um, one in particular is very connected in the Baltimore region, um, and um, she hosts a number of uh, meetings during the week, and uh, she has included the 988 information um, on her site. Uh, in addition, we have ambassadors um, who represent and are connected to a number of organizations. And um, they share that information. They go out in, into the community. Some are connected to the faith-based community. They go out, they do prayer walks. They may work with the local uh, law enforcement um, and um, provide information during their roll calls. We have others who are connected to sororities and fraternities, and they share that information. Um, and as I mentioned before, we have a large uh, connection uh, with our older adults through the older adult centers um, and also through the faith-based community. They're very, very active, and they make sure that they speak to their faith leader about um, you know, 988. And um, in a lot of cases, they are able uh, as ambassadors to host meetings, small gatherings in which they talk about um, 988, you know, similar to what we're doing here. But they're very active in the community. Uh, they participate in fairs, uh, local events, um, block parties, those connections. Um, and through our office, we also support them. Um, we go out and we participate in a lot of the festivals that are happening, in particular the ones that are upcoming this summer. Um, and we make sure that we table and we have a presence there and, and uh, speak with them. And I should also say that many of our ambassadors serve as leaders in their community. Um, they may um, be you know, very active in their neighborhood association. So they also share information with us and, and we try and support them. Yeah, we really tried to Think of 988 not just as a phone number, but as an opportunity to to educate the public about the importance of mental health, the um, the idea that like it, it's okay to need help, to reach out for help, and to use 988 as a as an opportunity to to normalize the idea 
to anybody uh, from a young person to an older person, anything in between, you know, can, can need help, can need support at some point. And, uh, and so, you know, working with, uh, older adults and the faith community and the different organizations that Samir mentioned has really been a, a, a wonderful opportunity, not just to raise the awareness of 988, but to talk more broadly about how important mental health is to, to our broader well-being. And I think Dan, if I may say one more thing, I think Dan has raised an important point. We always kind of, when we present, say it's okay not to be okay, you know, mm -hmm. because our older adults, and especially in our families, especially in the immigrant communities um, and in communities of color, you know, serve many roles. Some are raising their grandchildren. Um, they're well respected. So it's important to to share that information with with them. And also in a, in a lot of cases with older adults, there's a stigma. You know, people don't always talk about um, mental illness. You know, you know, we've heard some people describe it as, you know, bad nerves, you know, but we want people to know that there is help, you know, and that it's it's OK. Well, I was returning a book to the library and saw some, I saw a table with your information on it. Mm -hmm. They were having an event in the library and you were there. So that mm -hmm. was wonderful. That was great. And last night I was watching TV and one of our football players, one of the Ravens, uh, was was talking about 988 and that it's okay to call when you feel emotionally distressed it's okay to call 988 so i think you've done a great job that's wonderful Thanks. Um, can someone who is worried about someone else call on their behalf or does it have to be the person themselves um so Anyone can call for any any reason. Um, one thing to point out that's different about 988 than what some people might normally think of for 911, the 988 primarily is for counseling. So you can call and you can talk to someone. They can provide you support. They can ensure that you're safe. They can help you problem solve. They can help you, you know, cope. Um, but it's mostly about counseling. And so you can call on behalf of someone else to get ideas on like how you can support them um, to help you kind of cope with, with what might be going on. Um, but that's the primary thing that 98 is for. 98 does have connections to other services like um, mobile teams of clinicians that can go out onto the scene and uh, meet with someone in person in the community to make sure that they're safe and get them the support that they need. And um, a mobile crisis team definitely prefers for the person who they're going to go see to know that they're coming. So you can call on behalf of a loved one because um, maybe that loved one is too distraught to talk on the phone um, or, uh, you know, maybe they're not, not around at the moment. Um, so you can call on behalf of someone else um, and uh, a mobile crisis team could come out if that's deemed necessary. Uh, but um, it, more, more frequently, more commonly, it, they will go out um, after speaking to the person themselves. If it's like a, a if you're a bystander, if you're, if, if you just see somebody on the, on the street that you don't know personally, um, that, that you're worried about, um, not someone could come out for that as well, but, but that's even kind of less common because they don't really know what the situation is. And, and, um, so, so that's, you know, it's, it's hard to give like, kind of like black and white kind of, uh, rules on how things go just because every situation is so differently, but, I think you can always call 988 and get you know, for support and ideas, and uh, it's a good kind of first place to look. Um, when people call, can it be a couple? Can it be a, an entire family? Does it have to be an individual, or or can you have your whole family on the line? 
Um, I think you could have your whole family on the line. Like, <laughs> you need the technology, you know, to <laughs> make it work. You need to need everybody around the phone, or you need to patch them through on a uh, like a, on a three way call. So, so I don't see why not. I think the the number one thing for nine eight eight to remember is that it's a no wrong door sort of a thing. Like you're never going to call nine eight eight and have the professional on the other end tell you you know, to, Can't help you have to look elsewhere for right. support, you know, whoever, if you, whatever you call with, um, the uh, professionals on the other end, are going to do their best to, to try to help, help you get the support you need. Um, this 988 phone number is really helpful and it's really filling in gaps and it's just a wonderful thing to have at this time coming out of COVID and, and having it available. But how are you going to get the word out there? How are you going to let everybody know, hey, this is here now um, and it's a great service. How are you going to do that? Well, I'll take that. Well, we've already started. You know, we started last year. You know, we have a team of ambassadors that, that go out um, and they are from all four jurisdictions. We also have our community engagement committee that goes um, members that are very well connected and they go out and share information. Um, we have connected uh on uh, with that community engagement committee with people from the local uh, behavioral health authority. So we work very closely with them and they are excellent. They're always out and about. So they have 988 material that they share. Um, we call it swag, but it is material. We have <laughs> postcards, we have stress balls. We try and get everywhere where people are. Um, if not the uh, two of us physically, but also the, the team that works with us. And also we have a marketing campaign. I know Dan will, will be able to talk more about that, but we are, we're on the ground out and about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, we think that that sort of in-person community engagement is a really important way to get the word out that word of mouth and hearing information from sources that you trust, like, like AARP uh, is is a really strong uh, strategy for getting the word out, but we do have like more traditional marketing uh, where we have different uh, you know digital ad campaigns that are going on. You might, depending on um, your region, you might see some stuff on the on the uh, website or you know a little ad here or there. Things on social media. We've also done some TV advertising and some uh, radio advertising as well. And if you go on our website, our call 988, the helpline, you'll see we have a partner toolkit, partner resources. So you can actually use and tailor um, your materials um, you know, to a specific audience. We also have those materials available on the website in Spanish as well. So many times people go and they, you know, they uh, access those tools, um, which is very important. Well, we are running out of time. So I'm going to ask each of you, uh, any, do you have any other information that you would like to share with our membership? Well, I would encourage you to check out our, our website, our Call 988 helpline. There's a lot of information and materials there. We're always updating it. And uh, you can always reach out to, to Dan and I at BHSP um, for more information. And Lois, you know, you're part of our, our <laughs> committee, so you can you have access to that information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, just the website, 988helpline.org or 988lifeline.org are two websites to check out. Well, I knew that I had the right people when I asked the two of you to come on board, and I really appreciate your expertise. I also appreciate everything you've done to plan and get this service in place. I know it's it's been very difficult, and you've done a wonderful job. So thank you, and I know the citizens of Maryland will be grateful for everything you've done. Um, so we hope that our listeners have found this discussion to be helpful. And again, I can't thank you enough. You are definitely uh, gave us the information we need. Thank you. Thank you, Lois. Yes.
Thanks we appreciate everybody. you. Thank you.